Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'll talk about I'll talk about that the success stuff. I, you know, I never I never really had um, I never really had a lot of success barriers. It was weird when I was little. I always thought like anything I wanted to do, I can do it. I was really really strange. Like I was a strange kid. Like when I was little, I think I used to go to my class in front of my teacher and like make these like little like devices and like put it on the teacher's desk, and the teacher would be like, "Good job." And the other kids would be like. You suck, <laughs> right? You suck. But I was really always ambitious. I kind of thought like anything I put my mind to, I would be able to do it. And I, I kind of grew up that way. I, like legitimately, I grew up thinking I had green blood because I felt like I didn't fit in. I didn't like really belong. I thought like my ideas are too crazy. I see nobody else thinking about this stuff. I, I feel like I could do anything I want to if I put my mind to it. Why is, why is the world such a weird place? I remember when I first started pickup actually, um, what, one of the biggest motivations I had was, was what happened to me in school. So there used to be this girl from Yugoslavia that I was in love with, okay? And I was like, this is like grade three, grade four. And I told my little friend, I'm like, hey, I like this girl. Don't tell anybody, shh. And he's like, yo, don't worry about it. I won't tell anybody. She was the girlfriend of the school bully and he told everybody. So the last day of grade three or grade four, okay, last day of grade three or grade four, this is so bad. Last day of grade three or grade four, we're in the coat room, and like his little like goons, little like hoodlums come and take me. They take like one arm like this, one arm like this, and they hold me up against the coat room, and she's like, I heard you like me. How dare you like me? <laughs> like slap me in front of the face, in front of the whole school, like, ah. It was, like, it was like Jesus on the cross. I was like, ah, ah. It was so bad. Yeah. So I remember thinking, like, why is the world so cold? I was like, why is the world such a cold place, man? Like, why, why can I have a girl that I actually like be so mean to me? You ever feel like that? You're like, I would, do, I would do anything for this girl. Like, at the time, like, even grade four, I was like, I would have taken a bullet for this girl. Why is she trying to destroy me? <laughs> Why is she trying to destroy me? I love her so much, you know? And it, it, as a guy, as you're learning this stuff, it kind of just, like, tears you apart. You're like, why is my expectation of how the world should treat me different than what it actually is, you know? And um, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I kind of, like, went into a lot of, uh, I think, art and music. So I used to be a music producer. I used to produce for like eight years, seven years. Um, I produced some music for some of the guys in uh, Eminem's crew like six or seven years ago. So I used to produce heavy, heavy, heavy. And <clears throat> even as I was doing music production, I was like, yo, I feel like I can really kill it. I can kill it with this music shit. I could like take it to the next level. I know I could. But I grew up like in this area in Canada where the music was not like popping. There's nobody like from that area where I was from that sold like went like sold a million records and anything like that. Like it was, they were always kind of like just shitted on. So I eventually gave up. I was like, yo, what the fuck? I feel like I could crush it, but I, I can't, I can't live. I can't like expand. I feel like a big fish in a small pond. And so I always told myself, maybe if I grew up in LA, maybe if I grew up in New York, maybe if I grew up uh, speaking a different, a different language, whatever, I would be able to like have really just slayed it and killed it. So, you know, I never had, like you're saying, I never had the feeling of like, I can't do it. I always had the, kind of had the feeling of, I can do it. Now, that's very, very different. For example, one of my really, really good friends right now, his, um, his uh, sister and mom have schizophrenia, okay? Really, really, uh, really horrible mental disease. I don't know if anybody's experienced that or seen people around it, but schizophrenia is one of those mental diseases that really tear you apart and tear apart everyone around you. Like, it's really, really hard, schizophrenia. It's like the type of disease where you don't even know the person that you're with anymore. Imagine, like, imagine not knowing your mother or knowing your sister anymore because, like, the disease has torn them apart. Like, they're not the same person anymore. And so um, his uh, sister got schizophrenia. But before she did, she uh, was a musician, really popular musician, kind of like a semi-famous musician, you know, and then caught the mental disease and just, like, got taken advantage of by everybody. So what is his experience? His experience of life is don't try. Keep everything together, keep your family together, keep everybody on point, protect what we have, but don't put yourself out there, don't try. So I think life teaches us a lot about success. It teaches us good stuff and it teaches us bad stuff. The craziest thing about success is that we think we deserve it or we think we don't. 
And that's based on what our life has been up until now. Okay? You think you deserve success or you think you don't uh, deserve it based on whatever's happened to you up until now. But that's just the story of me. That's just the story of you. It's just a story. It's just your experiences. Okay? I'm going to talk about this a lot in the hot seat after. The hot seat, I say, you think you know who you are, but you have no idea. You think you know who you are. Really, really good book to read on this. Okay? Really good book. I'll recommend two books. First book to read on this is uh, Why Beautiful People Have More Daughters. Okay? It's an evolutionary psychology book. Okay? Amazing book, amazing book. Why beautiful people have more daughters. So really like, in this book they break down uh, evolution by, in detail, and they're logical about it. Very, it's not like a biased book, it's not like you should like, like only evolution, because they compare evolution to social scientists, which basically means like they compare, they compare like, there's two ideas, okay? So evolutionary psychologists say that everything that we do comes from our tribes, 10,000 years ago, hunter-gatherer tribes, cavemen tribes 10,000 years ago. Everything we learn is from that, and we can't, our brains still act that way. Our brains don't know that we have cell phones. <laughs> We're talking about Snapchat, right? We're talking about Snapchat. Um, some people go, go on Snapchat, and they're like, oh, 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 and they think it's a real person. It's crazy. I, right now with girls, what I do is I just like, I give them my Snapchat, and they feel like we're keeping in touch. But that's not me. <laughs> that's not, <laughs> he's like, that's not me. Try, try this. If you, if you have a girl's phone number and you can't see her for about two weeks or three weeks or whatever, give her your Snapchat. When you call her in three weeks, she'll pick up the phone because she thinks she's hung out with you. It makes no sense. Like logically, she knows she hasn't hung out with you, but we feel like we know that person because we see their picture. And it, back in the, uh, they call it the Savannah Principle, back in the Savannah tribes, if we saw somebody often, we thought we knew them. That's what it is. So our brains can't tell the difference that this is a cell phone. They, our brains don't know. Our brains can't absorb, like our logically we know it, but on an emotional level we don't know it, okay? So back in, these, uh, back in this book, Why Beautiful, I'll get, I'll get to it in a second. Really huh? so it's on this, so you said give them the Snapchat so you can talk to them. Yeah. So keep up with you. Do you ask them out again through Snapchat? Or no. Well, either way, it doesn't really matter, actually. Snapchat's okay. So um, in this book, Why Beautiful People Have More Daughters, what they talk about, is uh, two things, social scientists. So social scientists believe that everything that we know, everything that we do comes from two things, environment and nurture, okay? Environment and nurture, environment and nurture. I think everything that we do ever comes from environment and nurture. So who we think we are comes from our environment and our nurture. So I am cool because I was told I was cool in my life. I suck at life because my whole life I was told that I suck. I was told sit down, sit in the back of the class, shut up. Don't try to stand out. You'll be punished for standing out. That's environment. That's, na that's nurture, okay, as well. What's nurture? What your parents told you to do, what your family told you to do. Do people reward you when you put yourself out there? Or do people like step on you when you put yourself out there, right? Nature and nurture, okay? Um, or environment and, uh, environment and nurture. So who we think we are has been a product of that our entire lives. So even if you think, I don't deserve success in an area, you actually don't even think that. You don't think that. You don't think that. It's just your experiences up until now have told you that you don't deserve it. Your environment's told you that, okay? Your, your nurturing has told you that. What you've seen other people go through, has told you that. Now, the brain is pretty crazy because the brain stores information in a certain way. I'll tell you how the brain stores information. Okay. There's an amazing book you could read on this, either, uh, either Wisdom of the Subconscious Mind or Master Key System by Charles Hazel. Okay. Amazing books about this. So, what they say is that <clears throat> Madison's going deep. <laughs> Madison reads a lot of books. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, The Master Key System by Charles Hansel. So a really, really old book. Charles Hanel, H-A-N-N-E-L-L. Yeah, I think there was, a, there was a, maybe a Z somewhere in the, it's the middle initial or something. And then uh, the other book is The Wisdom of the Subconscious Mind, okay? And um, in these books, they make this kind of idea that what you know so far, you know it because your subconscious mind believes it. That's it. That's it. You know, you're, like you, you guys see us here in the, in, uh, on stage, you're like, like, we'll say, be abundant. You're like, but I don't believe I'm abundant. What is that? Your subconscious mind. 
I don't believe I'm abundant, right? We'll say like, go out, kill it, push it. I want to, but I don't think I can. It's like two minds going on there at the same time, right? Two minds. So what happens is everything you believe happened because in your subconscious or you're traumatized. Whenever, whenever something happens on like a high emotional point, you believe it, all right? Put your hand on the stove, ah, fuck. I'm never putting my hand on the stove again. What if you got up on stage here and like 10,000 virgins came and like threw like their vaginas and money at you? You'd be like, I love public speaking, yeah, right? So it's a high emotional situation, it cements that thought. You're probably in the audience today because some girl rejected you and it hurts you really, really bad. And you remember that and it's stored in your story, the story of me, the story of me and my life, right? Emotional, trauma, your brain believes it. Even if it happens once, and it's not even true, your brain will believe it, right? Old lady gets robbed for her purse, Whoosh. oh, young people are evil. It was one person, all right, all right? Um, even, even terrorism, terrorism's like not a whole representation of a race or a religion, it's some people that are extremists in that race or religion acting out, right? They're all bad, right? They're all bad. I don't know if they're all bad. Is it possible that some of them aren't? Is it possible that just a few? So, but whatever happens in an extreme situation of trauma, our brain believes it. It goes in our subconscious, we can't stop it. So why do we tell you to go out all the time? Like, go out, what's RSD say? Go out, go out, go out all the time. Every question you ask us, what's the answer? Go out, okay? The reason we say go out is we're trying to get something into the habits. So your brain processes new information this way. Habits, Automatic, subconscious. When something gets in your subconscious, it's fact. Your brain doesn't even fight it anymore. It's like 100% fact. So we're like, go out, do the approach, do the approach. Open, 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 open. So it becomes a habit. So you do it so often, it's automatic. You do it so often, it's second nature. And it becomes automatic it's in your subconscious. Pfft, just kill it. So success is like that too. A lot of times, you're gonna to wanna to make progress, right? Like he was saying he has this art thing he wants to do. A lot of times, you're gonna to wanna to be better at finances. A lot of times, you're gonna wanna um, kill it in other areas, success with women. But you can't even kill it because the subconscious mind is telling you you can't do it. So how do you fucking beat it? Habit. You beat it through habit. Or you beat it through doing some crazy shit that rewards you really well and your brain's like, yay, I love this now. Imagine, imagine like you went out tonight, you, you saw like, I don't know, fucking Pamela Anderson, she's old. You saw like Sofia Vergara, and you're like, hell, you're like, Sofia Vergara, I have a knock-knock joke. And you tell her the knock-knock joke, and she's like, that's amazing, let's go home now. And she's like, okay. You're like, knock-knock jokes are awesome. It's all I'm using. All I'm using is knock-knock jokes. You're like, fuck yeah, that's it. Is it because knock-knock jokes are that amazing? No, this rewarded you that one time with extreme, uh, extreme emotion, right? So, with the success too, I, I think one way to kind of get the habit of it is whoever you surround yourself with the most. There's this old Jim Rohn quote that says, you're the habit of the five people, or you are the average of the five people you hang around with. Jim Rohn, amazing guy, Tony Robbins mentor. And um, yeah, so whoever you hang around with. Because when you hang around people that are successful as well, it will kind of trigger your brain to the habits they have. So again, we're talking about habits, automatic, subconscious. If you have subconscious barriers, like glass ceilings we call them, I don't deserve these success. I don't deserve women. I don't deserve being happy. I don't deserve being successful in my career. I don't deserve money. That's another one, right? If you have these subconscious things deep down, hanging around people who are killing it and slaying it will help you to develop the habits that then become automatic and start to believe it. You can't, it's not like, I don't think success is something that you can force. I think it's something that's trained into you, to be honest. I think it's something that's trained into you. you what you can do is you can try to like just brainwash yourself or you can take the, the actions to train it into you. You have to literally train it. Success is a practice, really. It is a practice. So, I had a question. Uh, let, me, let me finish this part up. So, <clears throat> What I'll do sometimes when I'm working with an, a, a new person is I'll just like, even my assistants, I'll give them like tasks that are ridiculous just to see how they kill it, just to see how they knock it out of the park. Like I'm like, oh, this is a, I'll give them a task on purpose with incomplete instructions because I wanna see how they can challenge their brains to rise to the occasion and think out the problem, 
think out the solution, think out the answer, and then solve the problem. It's a habit. We want to train ourselves for the habit. You know, um, on a boot camp program, when I tell a guy like, I'm like, there's a group of people, go talk to them. Okay. I'm like, go talk to them. He's like, all right, I'll go do it. So he walks over. He feels like shit, <laughs> blows out. He comes over. Uh, how was that? Oh, well, you know, it kind of sucked. And I wasn't in the zone. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, hundred out of 10, hundred out of 10. Oh, uh, well, but uh, no, no. 100 out of 10. Uh, okay, I guess so. All right, okay. Go, go talk to some more people. All right, okay, yeah. The goal we're talking to more people. What am I doing? Trying to condition his brain to look at the positive. Look at the positive, look at the positive, all right? Success doesn't mean that you ignore the bad things you're doing or the shitty things you do. It means that you look at the positive and you learn from the negative. But you don't beat yourself up about it. A lot of guys when they do approaches, they, they do an approach and like, that was shit, I sucked, da, da, da. like they're so hard on themselves. Don't be hard on yourselves. Look, like, appreciate the positive, appreciate the good stuff you're doing. Do more of it, replicate it, and just learn from the negative. Learn from the negative stuff you're doing. It's not even negative, because everything negative is that you can learn from. Um, I have a great thing on boot camp. So on boot camp, if you guys, so there's a couple guys in the audience on boot camp. On boot camp, I say this. I say either you win or you learn how to win. That's all I care about. The effort. Did you win or you learn how to win? Guy will go talk to people, oh, I sucked. Did you learn something? Yes. Awesome. Two thumbs up. As long as you learn, that's all I care about. That's all you should care about. Don't, don't even judge yourself negatively. Do the best you can. Do the best you can. Try to kill it. Try to succeed. Learn from your faults. Improve in your faults. Areas that you don't, you're not that good and continue moving forward. Forward progress, forward progress. One of the best lessons I learned about that was I was playing golf with Nick, um, one of the CEOs and founders of Real Social Dynamics. And you know, RSD is like a, I think it's like $5 million company or something like that, I don't know what it is. And uh, we were playing golf, and as we're playing golf, that, that Alfonso, what'd you say, it's 10? Oh, okay, 10 million, <laughs> I don't even know. And uh, we're playing golf, and as we're playing golf, um, we're playing golf and I hit the ball and I think my partner hit the ball too. Hit the ball and it like hit the cement and didn't go in the right area. I'm like, fuck, hit the cement. He's like, no, no, it was good. The cement helped your bounce. I'm like, what? The negative helped me? Okay. Mm. And then I, and then I uh, hit the ball again and the ball, I should have done a lot better by the way because I used to do, go to a driving range so I don't know why I sucked. but. Uh, the ball went to like a sand pit and didn't go into the water, just kind of like missed the lake. I'm like, shit, it's in the sand pit. He's like, no, no, the sand pit was good because it stopped it from going into the water. And he kept saying, forward progress, forward progress, forward progress. That was his mantra, forward progress, forward progress. So as a CEO, he's conditioned his mind to always look at the forward progress. Even stuff that looks like hurdles, stuff that looks like you can't do it, stuff that looks like it's hard. Forward progress, forward progress all the time. It's always forward progress. So to kind of go back to your question about the, uh, the art stuff and thinking like, man, should I do this? Should I not do this? Somewhere in your past, you're conditioned, you have a success barrier. You have a limiting belief that's telling you don't put yourself out there, don't try harder, don't kill it, um, don't go all out. Um, we all have these. We all have these conditions in life. I talk about this a lot in the hot seat. Like, have you guys, have you guys seen the hot seat commercials before? Yeah, so like on the hot seat commercials online, the hot seat videos, like a guy would come on stage and we're like, yo, yell louder. He's like, ah. <laughs> you ever see that? Have you guys seen that? <laughs> like literally, like, like we'll, 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 what will happen on the hot seat commercials is we'll, or the, the videos is like, we're like, okay, guy, come up. I want you to yell as loud as you can. Kill it, crush it, yell as loud as you can. Okay? And he'll be like, ah. And they're like, audience, audience, what do you think? On a scale of one to 10, what was that? And it, they go, four. And he, I go, how loud do you think that was? He goes, I thought that was a 10. What's happening there? There's a success barrier he has. He's not comfortable taking up space, yelling, sharing his voice, etc. He's been told you can't do that. So he has a barrier. So as we, as we get the practice of learning, even learning game, is it even learning game? It's just learning how to let go. Remember I mentioned the helicopter dick guy? 
Learning how to get out of your own way for your success barriers. That is the practice of game. That is the learning game. That's all it is. You're so money, you have no idea. Like that movie Swingers, right? You're so money already, you have no idea. But you've been taught. You've been taught and conditioned not to be yourself. You've been taught and conditioned that you weren't enough, right? At a very young age, something happened and shut you down mentally and emotionally, all right? As Julian was saying, man to woman isn't something you do, it's something that you stop, tr you stop being afraid of. How do, Julian, Madison, how do I walk up and be man to woman? Well, take your hand, put your hand in the middle of your legs, and see if your crotch is there. If your balls are there, you're already man. How do I, how do I be? How do I be? You are. How do I be? Uh, uh, you, uh, uh, uh. you are already. You're already man to woman. But it's something that's happening in your communication. You're shutting down. You're not letting it come out. You're stifling yourself. That's what stifling is. Conditioning, social conditioning. So the way that social conditioning works, even when it comes to success, social conditioning is always like telling you stuff in the background. It's like a parasite in your mind telling you stuff. You're not good enough. Try harder. Be better. You don't match up to your older brother who's more cooler. Your dad doesn't like you, right? You should be more successful for your age. Whatever, whatever. It tells you, right? And it's like a parasite on your mind that's constantly wearing you down, constantly tearing you down, constantly tearing you down. So what we try to do is take off the parasite. Literally, you guys, like literally, maybe not technically, but you guys could go out and be just as good as I could tonight, just as good as Julian tonight. You can guys go out and just kill it just as much as we could. But the reason why you can't is because the parasite's there draining your energy. To, like one of the things we talk about is decision-making fatigue. Do you know what that is? It's like, should I do it, should I not? There's, there's my future girlfriend. Should I, oh, oh, I shouldn't. But maybe, she's walking fast. I, oh. She's on a cell phone. I, oh, uh, uh. Hey. By the time you actually do say hey, you're like all like fucked up internally, right? That's decision-making fatigue. That's just an approaching, but you have it in other areas too. Education, school, finances. I want to buy the thing, but I shouldn't. I want to save the money, but I, ah. This constant back and forth. A great thing you can do is meditation, because meditation teaches you how to think one line. Like think, um, whenever your attention goes all over, kind of like refocus it. Great thing you can do. Uh, best meditation app, I'll give it to you guys right now. Headspace, okay? Write that down. Headspace, H-E-A-D-S-B-A-C, the best meditation app I've ever used in my life. I recommend you guys check it out. It's the best app ever, Headspace. Okay? Oh, you don't have to do it right now. You can write it on a piece of paper. <laughs> you don't have to do it right now. You can write it on paper. All right? So Headspace, the best app you can ever get. So um, I, think, I think with momentum, there's like, and I'll, I'll jump off the stage for a bit too here. I think with momentum, I think there's like different types of momentum. I think there's like day-to-day -day momentum, and then there's social momentum, there's a longer type of momentum. Um, I'll give you an example. So day-to-day -day momentum is like just getting up and being able to, what the fuck? <laughs> being able to walk properly. That would be day-to-day -day momentum. Being able to put one foot in front of the other. Uh, being able to walk, get up in the morning and just have like your morning ritual. That's like day-to-day -day momentum. And then there's momentum where it's like city-long momentum. So if you notice, even if you go out and get a bunch of numbers, you try to go out and get a bunch of numbers, and some of them are not available to hang out with you that day or that week. You gotta wait till next week, right? So there's week long momentum. And then you have, I think what Ty would say, Ty Lopez uh, in his garage, what he'd say is you have success momentum. So what does that look like, success momentum? I think that's just where you are used to going out. Okay, so I'll, I'll explain what that means. There's a few ways to motivate yourself. We're all motivated by different things. Some guys are motivated by success. They're like, I want to crush it. I want to kill it. I want to be the best. If you ever said to your life, yourself in your life, I want to be the best at blah, 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 you have a success motivation, success momentum. Some people say, I just want to be comfortable. I want to be secure. I want to be happy. That's a secure, happy momentum, motivation. Now, some people say, I just don't want to lose my rhythm. I just don't want to lose my flow. And that is... Uh, that is momentum motivation. You just want to lose momentum. That's completely different. You don't care about being number one, you just don't want to lose your flow. You're afraid of what it looks like when you're out of the zone. So if you guys learn self-development, success with women, you probably felt that. You probably went out at some point, let me know if this is true, let me know if I'm wrong. You've went out for some point for like a week or two weeks, killed it, 
and you're like, I have to go out next week, but I can't because I got exams or work. You're like, shit, you're like mad. Right? You guys have felt that way? Yeah? So 